Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 7th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk to you about a new report out from NOAA about the present state of coral reefs and in particular, a massive coral bleaching event that occurred from 2014 to 2017 which was the worst coral bleaching event that occurred in the global record. Now, coral bleaching is driven primarily by increasing ocean temperatures in which corals themselves have difficulty adapting to the heat change due to its relationship with a symbiote. But before I go into that, I would like to call your attention to a report from 2012, back in 2012, by the World Resources Institute, which indicated the increasing risk of widespread coral bleaching due to human-caused global warming as early as the 2030s and becoming extraordinarily widespread by the 2050s under high to mid-range fossil fuel burning scenarios. So, so this graphic here was produced by the World Resources Institute and it shows frequency of coral bleaching events for certain regions of the world on an annual basis. And so for example, in the yellow range the frequency of coral bleaching events would range between 60 and 70 percent. And in the darkest range, the darkest orange range, the frequency of coral bleaching events would range between 91 and 100 percent. So year after year, coral, coral bleaching events for many regions by the 2030s. And for most regions by the 2050s. Now, it's worth noting that corals face a dual threat from human-caused climate change. One threat is ocean warming, but the other threat is ocean acidification. And this dual threat occurs in different spatial regions of the globe at different intensities. Coral bleaching's risks are greatest at the equator and expanding northward with warming and ocean acidification risks due to increased carbon uptake of the world ocean systems start at the poles and proceed southward. So when atmospheric CO2 levels reach a range between about 550 to 650 parts per million, and when global temperatures reach a range uh, above two degrees Celsius, uh, above the Holocene average, above the pre-industrial average, then you tend to get this very, very widespread impact to corals in which the, the, the question emerges, how can corals survive such a state? Or at least how can the reefs that, that many of the world's ecosystems and many industries depend on survive. And it looks like if atmospheric CO2 levels get above 450 parts per million and warming gets, gets above two degrees Celsius, then, then the risk to corals is quite extreme such that it's possible that, that as much as 90% of the world's corals would be lost under such a situation. Now, corals are one of the proverbial canaries in the climate coal mine, so to speak. And so stresses to corals is an indicator that human-caused climate change is, is really starting to ramp up. Now, in recent years, in 2014 through 2017, the world experienced a very severe global coral, coral bleaching event. And this map, which is produced by NOAA, provides an indicator for areas in which coral stress was extraordinary 
during this event, both in 2015 and in 2016. And notate, note all the various regions that are circled in this graphic here. I'd like to call your attention to the particular report, which is which has been issued by NOAA and is likely to appear as part of the National Climate Assessment. And the report is entitled Unprecedented Three Years of Global Cor Coral Bleaching 2014 to 2017. The authors are Michan Scott and Rebecca Lindsay. And this is the, the press release statement, which includes the map of the extent of coral bleaching events during 2015 and 2016 and also an explanation as to how corals bleach by by losing an algae symbiote which corals depend on for their survival and the reason why corals turn white is because they lose the algae symbiote which gives them their natural color and and they then appear only as their calcium carbonate base, which, which, is, which is a bright white. It's not that the corals are dead when they are bleached necessarily, but they, they, are, they, they have lost their ability to take nutrients from the water and their lifespan is, is, is greatly reduced and they're on the, on the road to, to die off under bleaching. And unless they get the symbiote back, when water temperature is cool, then, 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 then they're at risk of dying. And here are some images from NOAA of bleached corals at, the Australia's, at Australia's Great Barrier Reef, which is one of the very large marine ecosystems that is now under severe threat from human-caused climate change through fossil fuel burning, ocean warming, and ocean acidification. Now, even though the globe is not presently experiencing what NOAA indicates as a global mass coral bleaching event, the present ocean temperatures are enough to generate widespread coral stress and risk of coral bleaching, despite the fact that, that we're not presently in an El Nino state, we're not presently in a state where global temperatures are again spiking to new record levels, but we are in a state where global temperatures are higher in a three to five year range when they ever were before. And so stresses to corals are still quite high and haven't really backed off too much from the very severe coral bleaching event that occurred during 2014 to 2017. And NOAA has issued the highest alert level for corals without declaring a global coral, coral bleaching event. And here you can see the areas where coral bleaching watches and warnings have presently been issued, as well as NOAA's outlook for potential alerts for coral bleaching. And this is at the NOAA Coral Reef Watch site, which I encourage you to take a look at if you're interested in keeping track of coral bleaching events, which unfortunately are likely to occur with greater frequency now that we have warmed the earth into a range above one degree Celsius above the pre-industrial temperature averages. So Presently, so to sum up, presently, corals are under increased stress due to the warming that we've already inflicted upon the Earth system and the Earth environment. But if we continue to burn fossil fuels, it, it doesn't take very long to get into a situation where corals get hit year after year after year with, with ever worsening stress, both from extreme temperatures and rising ocean acidification due to high levels of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.